today on Dad Actual will be showing you how to make interview backwards. If you've ever watched a professional football game, you might have noticed that the pre- and post-game interviews often take place in front of a background filled with all the sponsors' logos. Today on Dad Actual, I'm going to show you how to make one of these with cheap and easy parts you have lying around the house. I purchased some foam cardboard at a local art supply store for just a few dollars. Uh, this one's probably about three feet by two feet. Uh, they had bigger ones, but I just couldn't get them home from the store. I then also bought us some, some nice photo paper, grabbed a scissors and of course a glue stick. And then I went out on the internet and I found the logos that I needed. Uh, these are easy to find. They're all over the internet. You just pick the ones out you want and uh, you can put them out on a sheet. After looking at several pictures on the internet, I determined that uh, a one piece of paper would have two logos at the top and two at the bottom. And that was about the size that the professional boards were using. As it worked out, each logo was about 380 pixels by 260 pixels. So I put some guides into Photoshop and then I went about filling in Photoshop with the different images. One of the nice things about Photoshop is the layering function. Um, using layers will let you see all the logos that you've created at one time and you can mix and match them across your uh, board. So we start with the background, which has a 380 by 260 square set out in the guide. And then we just go in and add our different logos that we want to have. As we move along with the project, we can switch the logos to some of the other things that we have stored in the layers. Occasionally you'll have to make sure you hide one to bring up the other. But this can save you a tremendous amount of time, especially as you get going, as you can move left and right, and uh, bring up logos, take away logos, rearrange the positioning of logos. Um, so you can have a board that looks a little bit with a variety. It doesn't look too much like a pattern. Once you have your drafts printed out, take them over to your board and see how it's going to look. You're going to want to avoid duplication because the one thing I've noticed when looking at the real boards on the internet is that it's kind of a hodgepodge. It's not always exactly the same thing in the same place. Logos will be switched around and matched next to others at different times. So when you build out your board, you'll want to make several different versions where, say, the Puma's in one place, the Arsenal's in another. For right now, though, it doesn't really matter. It's just an idea of how many pages you're going to need. You're going to want to make sure you have plenty of ink and a very good printer. This is going to take a lot of time to print all of these out. I'm using photo gloss paper, which has resulted in a really, really nice looking image. It's just taking a lot of ink. My printer actually has a problem in printing the colors on the lower half of the page is creating this line. So what I've been doing is I took a piece of paper and folded it in half lengthways and widthways and I've been using that as a guide to cut out the pieces that I want to keep. These, for example, are good. Those are I'm going to put in the recycling bin. Slowly it comes together. I have a lot of extra pieces because of some of the printing errors. I'll use those to fill in down at the bottom, which won't be on the camera as much. Well, it's taken a bit of time and effort, but as you can see, the semi-finished product is looking quite interesting. Now I'm going to go through and make sure that I don't have any duplications. No Arsenal logos next to Arsenal logos, no Pumas next to Pumas, as best as I can before I start to move on to attach it to the foam cardboard. We use simple glue sticks to glue the paper that we had printed onto the foam cardboard. You have to be sure to get the corners and the edges done as best you can. We used a paper towel to push it down so as not to spill the ink and to make sure the corners and seams look clean. Don't worry if there's a little gap. It doesn't look that bad once you get it on camera. I'm happy with how it turned out. You can see seams if you look hard enough, but uh, most of the time when you're doing a video, it doesn't really show up. And there are a few, for example, here. We'll take a butter knife, put some glue underneath it, and uh, push that down a little bit tighter. But overall, pretty happy with the project. Subscribe.
follow and like this video video bye